Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It is a great day for mathematics as usual, and we are back at it. We are going to be problem solving with quadratics today. Um, I cut and pasted this on here so you could pause and read it if you want. Um, there's some nice information in here. My approach, I don't really like to have students memorize steps on what to do. I rather, I, I really would prefer that you read and kind of think it through instead of memorizing steps. But there's some good information uh, back there, so I thought I'd put it on there. Um, so we have a problem here. Two integers differ by 19, and the sum, <coughs> excuse me, of their squares is 293. What are the two integers? I really have two rules that will take you a long way in solving any uh, problem when problem solving. The first rule is if you can make a drawing, then draw. Make a drawing, okay? Can't make a drawing here. There's nothing really to draw, I suppose, a number line, but that's not going to really help me too much with this particular problem. And the second thing you can do, if you do not know what to do, is let a variable represent... Sorry about that, P. What you are asked to find. And if you do those two things, one or both of them, I'm sorry, depending on the problem, you'll be surprised at how quickly you can just start moving forward with the problem. Um, you're thinking, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to do that? Well, what are we asked to find? We're asked to find the two integers. Okay. Well, I can't let a variable equal both integers, but I can let a variable equal one integer, okay, one of the integers, that's, that's a really bad R, okay, um, I'll do it that way, okay, and then I'm going to reread the problem. X represents one of the integers, okay, so there we go. Well, Let's reread. Two integers differ by 19. Okay, stop right there. Well, if one of the integers is x, then the second integer could be one of two things. If they differ by 19, the second integer could be x minus 19, because they differ by 19. This integer here would be 19 less than this integer here. Okay. Um, or, if you don't want to deal with negative numbers, you could also say the second integer is x plus 19. Think about that. Because x plus 19 is 19 more than x, so they still differ by 19. And that's the one I'm going to choose because, you know, the folks get confused with negative numbers. So I'm just going to get rid of that, and I'm going to go with x plus 19. So you see how that worked? I didn't know what to do, and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm on a roll here just from this first phrase. And then I read on, the sum of their squares is 293. The sum of their squares. Well, the first integer is x, so that's, that's a squ x squared is, is, is x's square, so to speak, plus x plus 19 squared, the second integer, is equal to 293. Ooh, ooh, fantastic. Now we have something we can handle. I can do this. I can expand this. You had better know that 19 squared is 361, and if you don't know, you better learn your perfect squares through 25 squares. Uh, for t through 25 squared, it will save you so much grief. So here I'm just simplifying. I'm going to subtract 293 from both sides, and that turns out to be 68. Okay, I'm going to factor. Actually, I'm going to, it's, it's really easier if you just divide everything by 2 or by your common factor. You can factor it out, but that confuses people sometimes. So why not just divide everything by 2? Um, uh, because really, if you factor out the 2, it's, it's, not, it's inconsequential in this uh, in, in this situation. Um, so I divide everything by 2. Yeah, yeah, baby, this is factorable because 2 times 17 is 34, 
and 17 plus 2 is 19. So I can quickly get x is equal to negative 2 or x is equal to negative 17. Now be careful, these are not your the two integers. It might be a little tricky because it looks like they might differ by 19. They might differ by 19. So, um, but they don't. Negative 2 and negative 17 don't differ 19, they actually differ by 15, okay? And remember, we let x equal one of the integers, and x plus 19 was the other one. So if x equals negative 2, then x plus 19 equals negative 2 plus 19 equals 17. Well, let's check this out. Do negative 2 and 17 differ by 19? They do. And what about the sum of their squares? Well, that is 4, and you better know that 17 squared is 289, and you add those up. Oh, 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 ow, ouch. Come on, Becker, that was ugly. 289, that does indeed equal 293. So one solution is negative 2 and 17. Now, really, if you think about it, you should be able to quickly surmise that the other solution is 2 and negative 17 because these differ by 19 um, and we're squaring them so and you square any number it comes out positive and um, uh, you're gonna get the same sum you're gonna get 293 but if you don't see that it's you know it's okay um, we have our other solution for X if X equals negative 17 then that implies that X plus 19 well negative 17 plus 19 equals 2. Okay, and we already talked about how we could verify that, but we get our two very nice solutions. Um, probably should put an or there. Negative 2 and positive 17, or 2 and negative 17. So, pretty nifty. Okay, this next one's pretty cool. An open square base container is made by cutting 4 centimeter square pieces out of out of a piece of tin plate. Well, I um, I got some uh, different tin plates, or not different tin plates. I thought you might not, you might not know what tin plate is. Um, this is a big giant roll of tin plate they make in factories all over the world. And they roll them out and they cut them to, you know, to sell so folks can make things out of them. Different companies make whatever they want. Now this isn't a um, this isn't square; it's rectangular. But I'm just trying to show you what they're doing here. They're they're cutting out the the, the squares or the, the corners and squares, and then they're going to fold up the remainder of the tin plate and form a open rectangular container. And it might look something like. This now they tell us that uh, that it's square. That's pretty important. We'll do show you that in a second. Okay, so this is the container they're going to end up with, or something like it. Here, draw the hidden lines. So it's like that. I hope that helps you visualize it. Um, okay, so it's a box. You put stuff in the box or a container or whatever. Well, they started with the tin plate. Okay. Um, okay, and what did they do? Well, they cut out the corners right here. They cut them out, and here I'm I, clearly you have to make a drawing, okay. Um, and then they folded it up. After they cut them out, they folded it up and got that. Okay, so we have a nice drawing. If the volume of the container is 120 centimeters cubed, so this volume is 120 cubic centimeters, find the original, find the size of the original piece of tin plate. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm stuck. What do I know? Well, I know that these, uh, I don't want to put it there. Um, I know that these are four. It really doesn't matter. I just didn't want them in the way of what I'm about to do. 
These are all four centimeters. These are all little squares, so it's four by four, okay? And what else do I know? Well, the volume of a rectangular prism is given by length times width times height. So I might be able to use that. I also know uh, that they say that it's a square-based container. So this base here is a square. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so that's a square. We're going to come back to that in a second. We got some good information here. Okay, so I know volume equals length. I just need some more space, so I'm moving down here. Times width times height. Well, I know the volume is 120. I don't know the length and I don't know the width, but think about it. I know the height because if I cut this out and fold it up, isn't the height, doesn't the height of this container have to be four? Because these guys are four right there. They're four. Okay, so the height of this container is four. So I know that I'm going to be multiplying by four. I'm just going to put that right here for now. Okay. Now, I need something to represent the length and the width of this container. Well, if this is a square, I could let each side be x. They're all x. It's a square. They're all the same length. Well, if from here to here is x, then from here to here must be x as well. Okay? And um, Well, that comes back to play in, in a little in, in just a little bit, but um, I just wanted to make that point real quick. Sorry, I got stuck there for a second. Um, but um, you now have the length and the width of the uh, container. You know that this is x, and if that's x, this is x. Okay. Well, my length is x, and my width is x, and my height is four. So I have 120 equals 4x squared. If I divide 120 by 4, I get 30 equals x squared. And I take the square root of both sides, and I get root 30 equals x. And I didn't put plus or minus because I'm dealing with a length, so I'm only interested in the positive solution. Okay. Now, remember, I said that this was x, and, and what I've just found out at this that this is square root of 30, right? But what am I being asked for? I'm, ask, I'm being asked for the size of the original piece of tin plate, its dimensions. Well, if remember, this is going to be the same length, so I'm going to say this is square root 30. So that means this edge has to be 4 plus 4 plus root 30 or 8 plus root 30. And same thing here. This is root 30, this little section. So this would also have to be 8 plus root 30 from here to here. And there you have it. Find the size of the original piece of tin plate. So we would say that it's 8 plus square root 30 by 8 plus square root 30. And our unit is centimeters, so we could add our units in there for both of those. So, all right, cool. Um, all right, I am going to stop there and uh, make a quick second part, give you a break. So, party on.